So I wanted to do another play test of my uh, quick fantasy battle uh, game and uh, today we're going to have a little fun with spells and non-human troops and stuff like that. So here we go with another play test today on Greyhawk Ragnar. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. On this side of the battlefield, we have a palish army of the theoc uh, theocracy of the pale. We have on the two hills, we have uh, two units of crossbowmen. We have one unit of heavy cavalry knights on the left flank, and one, two, three, four units of heavy, heavy infantry with one leader. On the orcish side, those were saying that the this is an orc raid into the pale. We have two units of medium crossbowmen on the end. We have one, two, three units of medium infantry, two units of light ogre infantry, and two units of light troll infantry. Ogres and trolls have to be light units because they're chaotic evil and they can't get organized enough to, to become more um, uh, disciplined units. And again, we have one leader in the back. Uh, just to recap the uh, turn sequence, first you have the command phase where we roll a die to see how many command points you get. Uh, command points can be used to either activate your units to move them or to help rally them later on. Um, then is the movement phase. Uh, each unit has a movement uh, rate uh, calculated in uh, centimeters. We then have the missile fire phase, which happens simultaneously from both sides. We then have the melee phase, which happens simultaneously for both sides. It is during the missile fire phase that spell casting happens. And in this, um, uh, in, in this scenario, we are going to assume that there is a... Um, let's see, what do we say here? Uh, we'll say there is a sorcerer on the uh, orcish side who's assisting them, and we'll say that there is a high priest, um, 11th level high priest, um, on the palish side. And we will get to the, to the spells uh, when, when they come. Basically, the high priest can cast part water, which isn't going to come into effect during this game. But he will also be able to cast um, Insect Plague or Dispel Magic, uh, which very well could. The Sorcerer, on the other hand, is able to cast Fireball, Cloud Kill, um, Dispel Magic, and it looks like that's it. Now you'll notice the, the spell list is rather truncated. And the reason is most of the spells in AD&D... Um, don't really have that much of an impact at this scale. Uh, you'll have units you know, that, when, when you're dealing with units of uh, 50 or 100 uh, individuals, uh, having a spell that can do damage to one person doesn't really help. Um, but when you have, air, what you need is a combination of an air, a wide area of effect and a lot of damage. So something like Fireball meets that uh, criteria. Um, you could have other spells come into effect if you have a duel between two characters, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Um, let's see, did Lightning Bolt... I don't remember if the Lightning Bolt made it in. Uh, no, Lightning Bolt didn't because it doesn't affect all that many individuals. It does a lot of damage, but it doesn't affect a, a lot of people when you cast it. So Lightning Bolt does not make the cut. Um, so we're going to assume the Orcs being the aggressors. The Orcs are going to go first. So... First thing they're going to do is roll command points in the command phase. Roll the die. They get two. Um, now, because they have that uh, sorcerer in there, um, they get no command bonuses for that. Uh, so that's uh, that's fine. Um, the orcs, do they get... Did it, did it, did it? And the orcs do not get a, uh, a command bonus either, so uh, they're just, just as is. Uh, so they get two command points. This means they can activate any two 
units and anything that's either activated or adjacent to the activated unit can move. So, that means our orcs can move nine uh, centimeters and our ogres can also move nine and our trolls can move ten. Uh, I'm sorry, twelve. So, I've got my handy dandy tape measure here. So our entire force can move forward nine centimeters except for our trolls. Now the trolls are not going to move forward more than that, however. They could, but if I did that, then I would need to um, spend extra command points to activate them. And considering I don't get any command point bonuses, I don't want to run that risk of having them isolated and unable to move. Now my guy can also move up. Let's get rid of that little fold. Um, so that's our move. Uh, the range of our crossbowmen is up to 15 centimeters. So there's nothing within range of our crossbowmen here on the on the left flank. Uh, same thing with our crossbowmen on the hills. They're way out of range. There's no melee because nothing's adjacent. No spells are being cast. Because fireball has a range of uh, two, so and the uh, and the magic user or the cleric can sh can count range from any um, unit that's activated. So if I activate this unit, I can cast a spell from here. So right. So now we're up to the palish turn. They get five. Um, in addition, they have their eleventh level high priest. who is a high priest, he gets a command point of one. So they have six command points right now. They could use that to activate this entire line and move them forward. They could also move these guys if they wanted to. And in fact, that's just what they're going to do. Now, because they're moving down slope on the hill, And we're going to call this an easy hill. If they were moving up it, it would cost two movement, you know, it would cost them basically two centimeters for every centimeter passed. Since they're moving down a hill, that's not uh, a problem. So our medium crossbowmen, so medium crossbowmen, have a movement allowance of nine. They're going to move their nine. They are also going to move their nine. Our heavy infantry has a uh, movement value of six. So our heavy mo heavy infantry moves up six. Staying in a line. And our knights, our heavy um, cavalry, have a movement allowance of 15. Now, they could press out in the middle here, but then that would leave them vulnerable uh, to an attack. But you know what? We're going to do it. In fact, they could also charge. Um, charge movement up to twice their normal movement rate. So they could charge up to 30... No, 30? Heavy cavalry 15, yeah. So they could charge up to 30 movement points. So they could charge and, and engage the, um, the trolls here on the end, and that is exactly what they're going to do. Now normally, if you're charging, and this is something that came out of the last playtest, if a unit is charging, um, and it's charging into a missile uh, unit, uh, like a crossbowman or, or longbowman or whatever, that unit would get an, a, a free attack. So would a pike unit. But because this is just trolls, they don't get that free attack. So now we uh, go to the missile phase 
uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, because we charged, we do the melee um, immediately. And the charging unit gets an additional die. So normally, our heavy cavalry has a melee strength of three, so it would have three dice. But because it's charging, it gets an additional die. And what we do is we roll on a five or six, it hits. Okay. So this is for the charging cavalry. Two hits on the trolls. Um, so that means that the trolls need to make a morale check. And they um, do that immediately. Morale checks are made, are made after all combat has been resolved. So um, if there was more combat, we would do the combat, but there is none. So we're going to make a morale check for our trolls. Um, on a morale check, and uh, remember this is kind of an abstract thing. It, it's a, When I say morale check, it's more a combination of morale and damage uh, and disruption. Um, because normally trolls wouldn't break. You know, so... Um, but we roll a d6. On a 1 or 2, the unit is broken. On a roll of 3 or 4, it must retreat. Um, and then subdued it. If the unit, the cause of morale check is... Okay, and there's no flank or anything, so we don't have to worry. So this is the morale check for the uh, trolls. They rolled a 1, so the troll unit is broken. And we're going to use this marker to indicate that it is broken. Now, broken units uh, cannot move except to retreat in a melee, or, uh, or if they're otherwise attacked. Cannot initiate missile fire. Lose one die when attacking, minimum of one. Um, cannot follow up retreating units, so if they do damage in the melee phase, they, they um, can't. And then they're destroyed if they're broken again. So now, uh, because melee is done simultaneously, the trolls get a melee back, and they get a hit. So now the knights must make a morale check. They did a three, so they move back. And they move back... Um, Uh, half of their normal movement rate. Their normal movement rate is um, 15, so they have to move back 7.5. So, 7.5. And, so and a half. They move back like that. Now, uh, because... Uh, and, and that's the end of the, of the, of the melee phase. Um, it is now the orc's turn again. They roll for command points. They have five command points, so they could activate up to five different units, but all their units are still contiguous. They're still touching. So they can act. They can just choose to activate one, and then the whole line can move forward. So that is exactly what they're going to do. Our medium crossbowmen can move nine. On the end here. And the crossbowmen have a range of up to 24, so they can easily uh, try to hit these guys. In fact, they could have hit, uh, could they have? Yeah, they could have tried to hit last round, I just forgot about it. And then these guys will be able to, uh, to do as well. So, um, so more movement. Uh, the medium infantry can move up. Nine as well, so they're all going to move up. Now, our ogres and trolls, our broken unit can't move, but um, the rest of them can, and the ogres and trolls move. 12, 9 and 12. So the, the, trolls, can, uh, the trolls can move uh, 12, the ogres move 9. So my trolls here can 
move around and attack the flank of these knights. The ogres can move nine so that they can attack the knights on the front. And then these ogres are going to stay in line with the rest of the orcs. And these guys will shift over a little bit. So that was the movement phase. We now have the missile fire phase. So our units of crossbowmen here, our, our crossbow orcs on the end, are going to attack the um, enemy crossbowmen here. So there's two of them, two medium crossbowmen units. Um, they have a missile strength of one. And the range is, call it 16. So they're at medium range. And medium range means, calculating range, da, da, da. Uh, once all of the I know I have to read my own rules. This is so I'm doing it right. Um, range. So all right. Add one die when the target is within medium range. So they're in medium range of these guys, so they get two dice each. So both of these guys are attacking these crossbowmen. Two hits. So these crossbowmen have to do, have to make two morale checks, but they're also going to fire back at the one on the uh, uh, the one in the middle here. So they're also in medium range, so they get two dice. They get one hit. So these guys need to make two morale checks. These guys need to make one. We'll do the two here. Right? So they retreat. They have to retreat half their normal movement. Their movement is nine. So they have to retreat four and a half. Which puts them right at the base of the hill. These orcs get one. They also have to retreat. Four and a half. And the reason that the Palish attacked this unit was, now these crossbowmen are um, cut off. So they'll require an additional um, command point to activate to move. Now we also have these crossbowmen here. They're going to try to attack those trolls on the flank of the guys. They're also in medium range, so they get two dice on the trolls. One hit. The trolls get to save. They say they make their morale check. They save, no problem. So that was the missile fire phase. Now is the melee phase. Remember, me melee and missile all happen simultaneously. So we're going to run the uh, ogres and the trolls. The ogre light infantry. Normally, light infantry has a. Um, a melee strength of one, but because they're ogres and trolls, the ogres get a plus one bonus to their melee strength as do the trolls. So there are two and two, so we get four attack dice. Nothing hits, because you need fives and sixes to hit. So the knights of the Palish are fine. We now get the, pa uh, the knights are going to attack the ogres, the knights, because they are heavy uh, cavalry, they have an, a melee strength of three. So they roll three dice. One hit. The ogres need to make a morale check. They roll a three, so they have to retreat. Normally they move nine, so they, could, they have to move four and a half. They move four and a half. Just not... Uh, 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 just not adjacent to the trolls behind them. So that was the orcish melee phase. Now it is the hum uh, the palish command phase. We'll roll to see how many. Let me collect some of these dice. We'll roll to see how many command points they get. 
one command point, but they get a bonus one for the uh, high priest. So they get two. They can activate two units to move. Um, the command range of a high priest is eight, eight centimeters. So they are out of command range. They have to move themselves up. So none of the Palish units can move. Um, they can still fire, however, the uh, the crossbowmen. So on their range, they're still under 16. These guys are now at a range of 20, so they're at long range. They do not get their bonus die. And these guys are similarly at long range, and they do have line of sight to these Palish troops, so they can shoot through that hole. Because remember, melee uh, missile fire happens simultaneously. So, we'll start with the Palish crossbowmen over here, attacking the trolls. They are in medium range, because they're 16 centimeters, so they get a bonus die. One hit. So we'll just mark that. Uh, these crossbowmen are going to hit those crossbowmen. So they get two dice because they're still in medium range. Uh, no, they get one die because they're at long range. They still get a hit, though. Now, these crossbowmen are going to hit there at uh, long range and miss. These crossbowmen are going to hit those heavy, heavy foot and miss. So now we've got two morale checks to make. We'll do the orcish crossbowmen first. They are forced to retreat. Because one or two is broken, three or four is retreat. And now the trolls. They roll a six, so they make their morale check. It is now the uh, melee phase for the uh, for the Palish troops. Um, They are in contact. Um, it can be split between multiple units or applied simultaneously. Yeah. So even though these guys are on the flank of these uh, humans, they still get. Uh, they can still make a regular attack um, because we're not going for super realism here. We're just going for something that plays quickly. Um, so the heavy cavalry has a uh, strength of. Uh, three? Three? Is that right? Yes. Melee strength of three. So they hit three dice against the trolls. Three misses. And now the trolls get an attack on them and miss. Because remember, melee is simultaneous. It is now the orcs next turn. You can see how quickly this is moving. This is the point. This is what I want. I want a quick moving game. Um, so... First, we roll command points for the orcs. The orcs get six command points, which is great for them. Uh, they have a sorcerer who has a range of six. So the sorcerer can still activate these guys, but cannot activate these units or these units to move. So what's going to happen is, he's going to move over here. And now, we have a big clash coming in the middle here. Because our medium infantry can move 9, which is just heartbreakingly out of range of the, uh, of the humans. But what the heck. Now, if these were elvish troops, the orcs would be charging right now because they have to charge if they see orcs. They go berserk and they just, they can't stop themselves. So now these guys are going to be in between. So now they can activate either one at need. These guys are off on their own. The uh, sorcerer is going to have to move that way in order to ever activate them to move. So we have first the missile phase. We still have these uh, missile troops here. Uh, they're, uh, uh, let's see, the range here is... 27, which is out of range for uh, medium crossbowmen. Uh, medium crossbowmen can fire a maximum of 24 centimeters. Um, they 
could, however, hit this one heavy infantry unit on the end. So that's what they're going to do. Um, these guys do have line of sight because normally they'd be blocked by this unit. But if you can see any part of the base from any part of your base, you have line of sight. So I don't know if, it, if you can see it too well on the camera, but there is a little, a little crack where you can see that, uh, that unit. So these guys do have line of sight. Now it is maximum range, so they don't get any bonus dice. Two hits on there. And now these guys are also going to, uh, they're going to attack the one on the, uh, on the uh, right side here as you're facing them. Again, maximum range. Actually, no, they're out of range, aren't they? I just said that. I said they're at 27, so they can't, they can't go. These guys, however, are still at 16, so they get medium range, so they get two dice on the trolls. Two hits on the trolls. So now we will resolve the missile fire um, uh, 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 morale checks. The guys on the end make both of theirs superbly. The trolls make one of them fine and are broken on the other one. So I'll put another broken marker there. Let me do that. So that is the, uh, uh, the orcish missile phase. We now have the orcish melee phase. The uh, trolls are broken but they can still attack, they get minus one die because they are broken. But they have a minimum of one. So normally they are light infantry, so they get one die. They would get another die for being trolls, but they are broken, so they only get, so they go back down to one die. So one for light infantry, one for trolls, minus one for broken. So they get one die. And they hit. And uh, then the, uh, so the human infantry, uh, I'm sorry, the human cavalry is going to need to make a morale check. The human cavalry does a melee back. Oh, I'm sorry, they, uh, they hit twice. So now we do morale checks. The human makes one morale check, makes it fine. The trolls have to make two morale checks. One they make. One they have to break again, but they're already broken. So units that are already broken are removed from the game. Now this game assumes that in the case of trolls, there are guys running around with pots of fire uh, and, and jars of acid to uh, to dispatch them. Finally, uh, we're not gonna you know do something complicated, some complicated mechanic like oh they come back in in two turns or whatever. <clears throat> we're gonna assume that the Palish troops know what they're doing. Um, so that is the Orcish turn. We are now going to the Palish turn. We roll for um, morale. A morale of one, plus one for being the High Priest. You have two. Now the High Priest has a command range of... Eight. So let's see what he can... Th we know he can activate those guys. Can he activate them? No, he can't. Can he activate them? No, he can't. So all he can do is activate his heavy infantry in the front, and that is exactly what he's going to do. And the long-promised... big honking battle in the center comes to, comes to fruition. So, we now have... <clears throat> Um, the missile fire phase, the only thing that could possibly uh, be done is these guys attacking these orcs on the end. Um, however, they are in melee, so let me just double check. Ooh, our missiles. Um, units that are adjacent to enemy units are in, are in melee cannot, uh, cannot attack but they can be attacked. So the crossbowmen are going to attack the orcs on the end here. Uh, they have a range under 16, so they're medium range. 
normally normally uh, medium crossbowmen have a missile strength of one. They're at medium range, so they get a bonus die. Two misses, because you have to roll five or sixes to hit. Now it's the melee phase. Here we go. Actually, these guys are going to move over so that... Actually, these guys are going to move over here so that they can start activating other units. Um, and I'm just eyeballing the, the, the leaders. They actually do have a movement a movement rate, but I'm, I'm not moving more than that. I know that. Um, so we're going to go down the line here. We're going to start with heavy infantry against the ogres, and we're just going to keep going uh, the way we go. So our heavy infantry has um, a melee strength of three. So heavy against the light infantry of the ogres. Um, when you're doing size, um, there was a change I made in the rules following the last following the last thing. Let me just real quick here. Um, calculating hits. Oh, cal uh, cavalry uh, would roll an additional die, uh, but we don't have to worry about that here. Um, so, heavy infantry against the ogres. Three dice, because they're heavy infantry. One hit. And now just down the line here, heavy infantry against medium infantry. Two hits. Heavy infantry against medium infantry. No hits. And heavy infantry against medium infantry. One hit. Now they're going to fire back. They're going to melee back. <clears throat> Light infantry, but they're ogres, so they get a bonus die. Light infantry against the heavies. Okay. So, ogres against the heavy infantry. No hits. And then medium infantry against heavy. No hits. One hit. One hit. So now we make, our, um, and there's no other melee happening because these guys are out of uh, touch. Um, now we make our uh, morale checks. The ogres, uh, they are broken. Our orc medium infantry, make it, make it. These orcs have to retreat. They move nine, so they have to retreat four and a half. And you can see, all, as all these units become separated from one each other, uh, from one another, the uh, the number of command points you get becomes more and more important because you need those morale, uh, those uh, command points to activate these separate units. So now we'll do our. Uh, Palish morale checks. This one rolled a four, so he has to retreat. And he goes back four and a half because he's normally, uh, oh no, heavies, I believe. Um, heavy infantry move six, so he goes back three centimeters, half of his normal movement. And then the one on the end makes it. Um, let me just show you here. I've got my my palish infantry. I tried to. These are all hand painted uh, on the shields there. I wanted to, to put the palish uh, palish arms on there. <coughs> so that is the uh, the palish player's turn. We now have a new turn for the orcs. Um, I, sh I just realized I should have been rolling for, to rally him. Uh, that troll in the end will we'll do that now. Uh, number of command points. Okay, they get four command points, which is nice for them. Um, in the command phase, units that are broken can be rallied. Um... So, uh, 
any broken unit within the command range of a commander can roll a, six, uh, a d6. So this guy's in range, that guy is not. So this guy gets to rally, and on a 5 or 6 he rallies, so that ogre unit is back in business. <clears throat> now they've got some more uh, uh, things, so these guys are going to move up, that's one. These guys are not in contact with either of these units. They're, they're touching on the corners, but that's it. Corner touching doesn't count as being in, um, in melee. So these guys are going to pivot and attack the flank of these guys. Now that will become important if they have to make a um, morale check. I can then also move up my medium crossbowman. And these guys can't be activated because they're too far away. These guys can't move because they're already in melee. So, uh, it is now missile fire. So, these guys are going to, are uh, just out of medium range. So, they're in long range. Both of these crossbowmen are going to attack the palish crossbowmen here for one hit. And then the palish crossbowman is going to do the same. Missing. And then the uh, this palish crossbowman can't see any enemy units. He doesn't have line of sight to anybody. These uh, heavy cavalry are in the way of those. And the commander is in the way of these ogres. So he has to stay put. So we'll make morale check. One or two. He is broken. Now, uh, bef before I do that, we also have one other piece of um, missile fire to, to do. I want to try the um, the fireball spell. So the fireball, hap uh, all magic happens at the missile fire phase, um, and. Uh, any unit that was activated can be used for the range of the fireball. The fireball has a range of two. So this guy was activated. He's within two centimeters of this heavy unit. He's going to cast fireball at that unit. Uh, and again, this is all happening during the missile fire phase. So uh, the, uh, the effect of the spell is uh, counts as an immediate missile attack with a plus three missile bonus to heavy units, plus two to medium units, and plus one to light units. What that means is you're getting um, a missile, a normal missile attack, uh, you know, with one die, but you're getting the more compact the enemy unit is, the more damage a fireball is going to do because it's centered on an area and then it radiates out from there. So if you've got a very densely packed unit like heavy infantry, they're all going to be massed together. So lobbing a fireball into them is going to do a lot more harm than if it's a light infantry unit and they're all scattered about. So because it's a heavy infantry, we get a, 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 we get a, a, a three die missile attack. This is the fireball. And you can only use each spell once. Again, just going for simple. Uh, in specific scenarios, if you want to increase the number of spells, or have multiple spell casters, make it more complicated, you can do that. But just for this basic thing, you get one spell, one of each spell for each spell caster. So, here we go for a fireball, three die attack, all misses. So that fizzled. Um, so that's, that's uh, the missile phase. We now have our melee phase. Our ogres are attacking the heavy infantry. One die for um, uh, being light infantry, another die for being ogres. Miss, miss. The, heavy, uh, the medium infantry against the heavy. One hit. And then we've got two medium infantries against the heavy. One hit. Alrighty, now there, we may lay back before we do morale. So, heavy infantry on the ogres. Two hits. Heavy infantry against medium, they get three dice, one hit. 
Um, <clears throat> and then the uh, these heavy infantry are going to fight the one uh, are going to attack the ones on their flank. One hit. So let's do morale. Um, ogres have to make two morale checks. Okay, they missed. They made the one. They missed the other. They are broken. Medium infantry makes it. Medium infantry makes it. Heavy infantry for the uh, Palish has to retreat. And he goes back with his brethren. And now this guy, uh, because he is, he has to make a morale check, but because he's being flanked, Um, subtract one from the die roll. So normally one or two is broken, three or four is retreat, five or six is no effect. Because he's being attacked on the flank, he subtracts one from this die roll. So he got a three, he also retreats. Now, the way I have the rules currently written, you can't follow um, unless you are required to as a special, um, a special thing. Um, for example, uh, uh, heavy cavalry must. Oh, <laughs> the heavy cavalry was supposed to uh, was supposed to uh, follow the ogres. Um, I I flubbed that. Um, we'll just. Make that. We'll retro. We'll retrofit that. That should have happened because heavy cavalry has to follow retreating units. Um, we'll just do that melee. One hit. The morale check. He retreats. Uh, oh, we're gonna get there in a second. And then the uh, melee back. One hit. He also retreats. Okay, so he get. Right. So. First, our heavy cavalry has to retreat. Heavy cavalry has to go back um, seven and a half because he has a movement normally of 15. So, boom. Now, that ogre unit missed its morale check and had to retreat. However, there's a unit of trolls right behind it. Because it can't retreat at least two centimeters, it is destroyed. There's nowhere for it to go. It just tries to re it tries to get away from the uh, from the attacking knights, and it just dissolves. Now we also have to make a, uh, a morale check for these guys. They made it. All right. It is now the orcish players' uh, turn, I believe. Or was that the ochre, the ochre, orcish player's turn? Yeah, that was the orcish player's turn, because they moved up. So now it is the palish side's turn. And they get four, plus one for being a high priest. They get five command points. He's got a command radius, a command range of eight. So he can activate the knights, no problem. He can activate the crossbowmen, no problem. He can activate this row. No problem. So, this row of units is going to envelop this stand of orcs. Now they can do this because normally you wouldn't be able to attack to, to touch a unit uh, to the back immediately, but 
there's a gap in there because they're sideways. Same here. They would normally not be able to put their flank against another unit, but this in, in this case they can because there's not touching. Um, our medium crossbowmen are going to move up. They have a movement allowance of nine. And our um, knights are going to wheel. Uh, they move 15. Uh, they just they, they can't get hold of these guys. Um, but they can wheel around. They move 15 like that. They can wheel around and hit the flank of these ogres. And what I did there was... I calculated it from the farthest corner, and my tape measure showed me I could get to there and hit them on the flank. So, missile fire. Um, these guys are within 20, um, so they're at long range of the trolls. Might as well take a shot at the trolls, because they're the only thing in line of sight. Miss. Uh, these guys are still broken, um, so they have to just wait. These guys, on the other hand, do they have line of sight? That is an interesting question. The one on the end has line of sight to these guys, and these guys have line of sight and are in range of these guys. So that's what they're going to do. Uh, this unit of heavy of uh, medium crossbowmen is going to attack the enemy crossbowmen, and because they're at what range are they at? They're at seventeen, so they're at long range. So they only get one die. They miss. Then these guys are going to attack those heavy infantry and miss. Okay. Um, all right. So. It is now the melee phase. We have uh, the heavy inf uh, the heavy cavalry and the heavy infantry both attacking the ogres. The heavy infantry uh, rolls three dice, as does the heavy cavalry. So there are two hits on the ogres. Bear in mind the ogres are already broken, so if they break again, they're toast. Now we've got one, two, three, me three heavy infantry attacking that one medium infantry orcs. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I believe that's all the, uh, the melee we have. So I'm going to do that first because this is interesting. Yeah, get back there. So, they're broken, they're broken again, so they're just destroyed. Because a unit that's broken already can't be broken again. Now, morale check for the ogres. Two. Right, so... Uh, but they get minus one because they're being attacked on their flank. So this turns into a two because they're minus one because the knights are attacking the flank. Um, and then this turns into a four. So we have a break and a retreat. However, they're already broken, so they can't break again. And the fact that the cavalry attacked their flank meant that that was the decisive factor. And the ogres are gone. So now at this point, the Palish troops have not taken any losses. Um, the orcs have lost all but one of their ogres and trolls. Um, they've lost uh, two, uh, two? Yes, they've lost no one of their medium infantry in the center, uh, but they're close to being surrounded. Um, at this point, I'm going to call this for the. Uh, the Palish troops. 
So, uh, so there we are. Uh, a, a neat little game, I think. Um, and again, uh, uh, an engagement like that took under an hour, and that was with me fumbling around with uh, playtest rules. So, um, yeah, I'm going to call this one a success. Thanks for watching today's video. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Below you'll find links to my Patreon, which helps make these videos possible. You'll also find the web store, where you can buy my books, and my blog, where you'll find all sorts of free downloads and other articles. Thanks, and have a great day.